Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. So, in the past video, we have discussed about Plan Plus and Terminal Plus concepts and what are the protocols we'll be using in Siemens PCS7 for that Plan Plus and Terminal Plus concept, which are Profibus and Profinet. And apart from those two, we'll have one generic communication protocol, which is Modbus, which is widely used in industrial automation. And how we are using to those modular type packages to Siemens PCS7. So we will be discussing about that how we will integrate the Modbus devices to Siemens PCS 7 architecture in a brief discussion in this video. So let's get diving. So basically Modbus is available in two different packages. Modbus RTU which is remote terminal unit. Modbus TCP which follows Ethernet principles. So first we will discuss about Modbus RTU. So in Siemens there is one special communication protocol card called CP341 communication processor. It's a combination with Profibus connected to ET200M interface. So as we discussed in the last video you can see this will be termed as planned bus and here since it is like shown in green color we can say it, it will be a profinet and whichever the lines shown in purple color will be profibus connections. So as you can see here, here ET200M are remote IO racks established in the automation architecture. So here uh, at the last we you can see CP341 card which is, will act as Modbus RTU master and as you know in Modbus communication slaves will be having the data and master will request the data from slaves. So you can see how uh, mass, uh, data will be taken from slaves. So this connection will be serial RS232 or 485 connection. So externally Modbus slave will be there for example a data point or a pH meter which will store the data process or process variable. So this uh, CP341 card will act as master and it will pull data from RTU slave device and it will be stored in ET200M CP341 card. So as it will also act as a converter. So this data will be converted into Profibus data packets and Profibus as we already know it will be communicated with master and slave. So uh, ET200M will be acted as a slave device and my automation station or PLC will be acted as master device. So here a protocol conversion is happening at the end of ET200M. So how the data is going to transfer, how the request is going to happen will be uh, discussed in the next slide. So as you can see, initially my CPU port and or AS station will request the Modbus RTU data request to ET200M through Profibus DP. So then it will recognize that I need to take data from Modbus RTU slave. So it will pull a request to Modbus slave which is connected to RS232 or 485. So if the device is alive and it is having some data in those registers, it will send the Modbus RTU response. At the same time, it will the CPU port and will send a data sent read request. So based on that request, data feedback and the Modbus RTU response will be collected through CP410. This communication was outrolled. I mean to say like this is a very uh, slow communication. So that's why uh, in industries we will be not using this kind of communication frequently and when you are uh, trying to connect with uh, ET not with ET200M, ET200SP uh, we have uh, one other solution which also served as uh, Modbus RTU master. As you can see the ET200SP CMTTP with the <laughs> model number. So uh, this will be used as uh, this can be acted as both TU master or slave. So the, the communication line will also be same as before slide. So it also will do the same communication field RTU slaves. So the maximum uh, data requests are eight parallelly. So if we have eight uh, slave devices, it can own eight devices data sim parallelly. So next comes Modbus TCP. So as I told, uh, TCP will be following Ethernet principles. So uh, the solution offered by Siemens is uh, CN400. So this is mainly a Modbus TCP client. So it will be taking data from Modbus TCP master or we can say server. Since this is a TCP IP protocol, will be termed as server and client. So as you can see on the left side, I have singular redundant uh, Modbus TCP server. So these devices will be having a TCP particular IP, which will be like uh, 192.168.0. something. Uh, we can define them. So uh, with those series slave, I mean TCP server uh, devices will be configured. And here you can see the CN400 setup. 
this is uh, available in uh, single and redundant i was showing uh, a redundant configuration so this will be uh, acted as a tcp client so the configuration and uh, software control can be done with an engineering station cn cnet so this software package is utilized to program cn400 uh, to configure uh, whichever the uh, tcp servers it need to take the data so and uh, from cn400 it will be direct uh, propnet connection to our uh, s7 400 or 410 so our uh, a station so uh, s7 410 some dbs will be occupied uh, for, to have this uh, modbus data so basically we will be using uh, s7 put and get instructions these two are uh, popular instructions to then we are dealing with uh, Modbus devices in our uh, CFC editor or programming uh, S7 410 PNC. So those uh, data or OBs will be directly shown in uh, our OS station. So in the next slide, uh, we'll be seeing how this uh, data is transferring from TCP server to our AS station. So as you can see, as I told, uh, it is directly connected through uh, industrial Ethernet only. So we can use Propinet itself. So our 410 will call a, a TCP request Modbus data. So as CN400, we are already having this TCP server data since it is acting as a client. So here we don't have any kind of protocol conversion or something. So directly all devices are having an IP. So Modbus data will be transferred through TCP protocol. So uh, as TCP request is going to server, it will send an TCP acknowledgement through CN400. So, but there is no protocol conversion here. So, uh, as it uh, acknowledges that I am going to send the data. So, our mod TCP server, uh, which is a field device, Modbus device, will send the Modbus data, our uh, CPU 410. And as all data was received, uh, 410 CPU will send an TCP acknowledgement that I have received the, all the data. So, this is a cyclic. So, we can't expect to get all the data in single OB cycle. So approximately it will take uh, 4 OB cycles to uh, complete one job. So it, if you want to take data from one Modbus TP, TCP server device, it will take like 4 OB cycles. So it is OB35, we will be discussing that uh, later uh, regarding OBs. But it will consume 4 OB cycles. And there you have it guys, uh, a brief uh, introduction of how PCS7 architecture is going to take data from uh, Modbus RTU or Modbus uh, TCP device. So I hope you understand it uh, clearly and if you find our videos helpful, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content on industrial automation. Thank you for watching the video and see you in your next video. Goodbye.